Hold on, you need, you need an antenna holder? I see a fog right here. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> I am the Liam's growing. <laughs> Do you exit doors and your car just screams away? You're growing into your role.
honored guests, trustees, faculty, family, and friends. On behalf of the Foxcroft Academy class of 2019, welcome to this year's graduation ceremony. Seniors, great job. Uh, if you would please silence all technology devices of respect to people around you, thank you. If you require assistance at any point during the ceremony, raise your hand and to get either Mr. Tom Nason. Where are you, Tom? Wave, Tom. Over here, okay. Uh, Mr. McGarry. Okay. Mr. Tardy over the same, so they seem to be over there. How about Officer Dennis? Right over there. So if you need any assistance whatsoever, just let one of those people know. Mr. Green, Dr. Sweat, Board of Trustees, RSU 68, Superintendent of Schools, FA staff, parents, loved ones, and of course, the class of 2019. Welcome to the 196th commencement of Foxcroft Academy. Thank you, Mr. Guthrie, Ms. Maynard, Ms. Ramsey, Ms. Fogg, and the Foxcroft Academy String Musicians for the music for this afternoon's festivities. Also, thank you to Ludwig F Fleck for an outstanding performance at Baccalaureate. Ms. Re Reyes Henderson and Mr. Krause, please come forward to con be congratulated for a job well done as the seniors did a masterful job marching this afternoon. Serious seniors, you did a great job. We did have our doubts, but you pulled it off. Great job. There are many people to thank that have contributed to our celebration of these students meeting a very important milestone, which represents that they've met the requirements and standards represented by the Foxcroft Academy Diploma. The first group that deserves a great deal of appreciation is the Foxcroft Academy Board of Trustees, which provides governance vision and fiduciary oversight for their beloved academy from the vantage point of the many areas of expertise that they represent. They all have in common a love of, for Foxcroft Academy in the best interests of the students. Thank you so much, trustees. <laughs> Faculty and staff, thank you for all your hard work and dedication to educating the students. I'd also like to congratulate Mr. Lombard and Mrs. Johnson, who will be retiring, who will be entering in retirement after this year. Mrs. Johnson is retiring after 21 years at Foxcroft Academy. Ms. Johnson, where are you? Th thank you so much, yes. And Mr. Lombard is retiring after 50 years of teaching, 20 years at the Academy. Mr. Lombard, where are you? Thank you so much. You both will be dearly missed. I say this every year as we are all very fortunate to have such a dedicated administrative team who not only meets expectation but takes the initiative to exceed standards. I've had the honor to work with this team for the past nine years. I would also like to thank Mr. Chris McGarry who's moving on to new experiences and thank him for an outstanding service to the Academy. Thank you, Mr. McGarry. One of FA's attributes is, of course, the buildings and grounds. This beauty does not happen by accident and requires a great deal of work to ensure the high quality facility that our students and community deserve. Thank you, Tom and crew. And thank goodness for Pam Weatherby, Kelly Hutchinson, Sheila Fitzmorris, and Counseling Services for all your diligence, attention to detail for the many awards and scholarship letters that have been handed out this week. Great job. <laughs> and parents and loved ones, if you've not been thanked by your graduates, please let me do it for them. Your love, support, and expectations most certainly serve as the foundation for today's success. 
Students, join me in expressing appreciation through your applause. <laughs> Seniors, Mr. Tim Smith and I started a new tradition with the, your class, the class of 2019, by conducting senior exit surveys, gaining your feedback about the experiences that you had at Foxcroft Academy. We heard many positive things. For example, many of you spoke highly about the teachers who challenged you, how they expanded your horizons while supporting your efforts. I was surprised to learn that many of you favored the student portfolios in senior presentations. We also learned about ways we can improve Foxcroft Academy. I was not surprised that many of you wanted to do away with the library reading requirement. <laughs> Ms. Taggart, don't worry, we are not gonna follow through with that. With the power of this knowledge, we have the opportunity to continue to work on making Foxcroft Academy the very best. Knowledge is power has been the motto of Foxcroft Academy since 1823. I've been wondering if FA's motto is outdated because in today's world with technology, knowledge is at your fingertips. In my day, we used encyclopedias, books, and newspapers. However, after reflection, knowledge is power is as relevant today as in any other point of time. It was through a senior exit interview that I concluded its relevance, as the senior stated how very challenging it was to find facts. With so much misinformation also available at your fingertips, you need to be analytical, evaluative, and a critical thinker, skills that we've tried to instill in all our students. You can't afford to be distracted with white noise. White noise is actually a scientific term, meaning noise containing many frequencies with equal intensities, verified by Time Magazine and Dictionary.com. In our world, there are many informational sources competing for our attention to accept their version of knowledge with similar depth. You have to take the time to analyze, to evaluate, to think critically about the knowledge, to check and verify all while not being distracted by the surrounding noise. It's not an easy thing to do, and in today's world, we need more people to seek true knowledge. To help you, my present to you, located underneath your chair, is a pair of Foxcroft Academy earbuds to remind you not to be distracted by the white noise as you continue your journey of realizing knowledge is power. Thank you, seniors. It's been a wonderful experience having you as students and ride on ponies. <laughs> now, don't put those earbuds in now. Please listen to all the speakers. We are not white noise, so. <laughs> Class of 2019, salutatorian Keying Wong. Chloe is a three-year member of the FA boarding program. She grew up in Fuzhou, China, and came to Dover Foxcroft in 2016. Chloe's been involved in several clubs at FA, including Key Club, and was the co-captain of the Eastern Maine Championship math team. She's a member of NHS and was a recent Rose Award recipient. In the fall, she will attend the University of Minnesota Twin Cities in Minneapolis. It's my honor to introduce Keying Huang, salutatorian of the class of 2019. It is my privilege to extend a heartfelt welcome to you, faculty and staff, parents, family, and friends. Thank you all for being here to mark this special moment with our class, the Fox Cross Academy graduating class of 2019. When I look back contemplatively on these last years of high school, I think they can only be described with a real known quote by the late author Charles Dickens. The quote is as follows. 
It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of bliss. It was the epoch of incredulity of doubt. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. I truly believe this quote poignantly describes all the hopes, fears, dreams, and occasional head heartaches we seniors felt at some time or another throughout our years in high school. However, please do not misunderstand me. I'm here to shed some light on the fact that each of these seniors had an individual part in the formation of an awesome class permeated time and again by a feeling of love, courage, joy, and unwavering devotion. Now, we seniors face a new age or era of thought, an era in which each of us lives in the friendly confines of FA and prepares to embark on an incredibly, incredible journey into adulthood. We have reached a crossroad in which of our lives, in which each of us is bombarded with countless important decisions. It seems like an impossible daunting task, but thanks to the faculty and the support from family and friends during these high school years, we were able to enhance our communication skills and our ability to solve problems creatively. We have become more independent, more responsible, and more respectful. I honestly believe that we have what it takes to successfully transition into adulthood. To all my classmates, congratulations. We have finally made it. I'm proud of each and every one of you. It has been an honor and a pleasure to spend my high school years with all of you, and I will miss you. Best of luck to you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Ryan Nickerson was selected by the seniors to give the charge to the class of 2019. Mr. Nickerson grew up in East Corinth where he attended Central High School. He earned his bachelor's degree in secondary education from the University of Maine at Farmington and his master's degree in secondary education from the University of Maine at Orno. Prior to working at Foxcroft Academy, he taught five years at Setamocha Middle School as the eighth grade math teacher. He's currently a math teacher, track coach, and department chair here at the Academy. It's my pleasure to introduce the class of 2019's faculty speaker, Mr. Ryan Nickerson. I feel like expectations are getting a little high. Let's just go ahead and lower those real quick. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Mr. Shorey, for the introduction. As he mentioned, I previously taught at Setamocha, and I was hired here at FA the same year the class of 2019 became freshmen. I've therefore had the pleasure, although at times it's been more of a pain, of having most of them as students over the past five years. It's been incredible watching these students grow into the young adults you see before you today, and I'm excited to see what the future holds for them. Class of 2019, I can only hope that moving forward, you use better judgment than when you selected me as your faculty speaker. <laughs> I'm convinced you did this as one final torment before you leave, but I'm excited for the opportunity to make you sit and listen to me talk one last time. As I was preparing for today, I struggled to decide on a topic. I had difficulty not sounding cliche and repeating what recent speakers have said. I watched countless speeches, went through several different drafts, and at one point I toyed with the idea, in tribute to your class, of putting it off to the last minute, throwing something together, and then hoping for the best. <laughs> Eventually I decided to blatantly rip off several of the speeches I found online and tell you three brief stories from my life. My hope is that by doing so I may pass along some small amount of wisdom that will help you moving forward, although I'm certainly not reinventing the wheel with any of the advice I'm about to give. 
If I do start to get boring, feel free to treat this like class, slip your phone out of your pocket, and watch a different speech on YouTube. <laughs> there are some very good ones out there. My first story is about knowing who you want to be. I can't remember who the speaker was at my high school graduation or much of what their speech was about. But one simple thing they had us do has stuck with me since then. They asked us to close our eyes and picture who we wanted to be one year from that day. And what was unique was that they emphasized we shouldn't focus on the profession we were interested in pursuing, but rather who we wanted to be as people. At the time, this was refreshing because I was feeling a little burnt out on people asking me what I was going to do after high school, and I hadn't given much thought to other aspects of my life. I'm thankful for that experience because it helped me to realize your profession shouldn't define who you are, but rather be part of a bigger picture. It also made me aware of changes I needed to make in my own life, and I'm a better person for it. Uh, sorry, I'm a better person for it today. So I would encourage you to take some time in the near future to reflect on who you want to be, focusing on all aspects of your life, the accomplishments you want to achieve, the company you want to keep, and your own personal character. And for those of you who are unsure what exactly that is, that's all right. You're not supposed to have everything figured out at 18, and therefore I would ref recommend you make reflection of this nature a habit. It is critical to have a vision for yourself to set goals for yourself based on what you find is truly valuable, and you won't know what that is unless you reflect on it regularly. By understanding yourself in this way, it'll help you to stay focused. My next story is about work ethic. When I was in middle school, my mom arranged for my brother and I to have a job shoveling the Corinth Library's walkway during the winter. At first, we didn't mind getting up early before school to go do the shoveling, but it didn't take us long to start to whine and complain about the chore trying to get out of the obligation in as many ways as we could think of. But every single time it snowed, our mom would drive us to the library and make sure we shoveled the walkway, oftentimes doing most of the work herself. And while I didn't appreciate it at the time, although in fairness to myself, middle schoolers don't really appreciate much of anything, <laughs> I count myself as fortunate for having parents that taught me the importance of hard work by working hard themselves and expecting me to do the same. I truly believe a good work ethic is one of the most valuable things a person can have, and therefore I recommend you get used to working hard. This will act as a foundation for success throughout your life and help you to achieve the goals that you have. My final story is about being resolved in the face of challenges. When my youngest brother was six months old, he was diagnosed with a rare disease that completely altered the expectations for his future. Because of this, he has spent much of his life in the hospital recovering from illnesses and surgeries, and when he's home, he must live in seclusion in order to try to remain healthy. I distinctly remember the day I overheard my parents talk about how the doctors put his life expectancy at 20 years. It's been difficult for him de to deal with a seemingly endless string of medical issues, especially while, people, while seeing people his own age grow up to live normal lives. And yet, despite these unfair circumstances, my brother is one of the most determined people you will meet. He refuses to let his condition limit him any more than it absolutely must and lives a life that is full of happiness and joy. I believe that it is in part because he is so determined that he has defied the expectations of when he was born and celebrated his 21st birthday last fall. <laughs> Thank you. I tell you this because it's important for you to realize that things won't go according to your plan. There are going to be setbacks as you work towards the vision you have for yourself, and some, some of those you will be able to control, some of those you won't. It's how you respond to these challenges that will determine your success. You must not become defeated by hardship, but rather remain committed to moving forward. Whew, got through it, all right. <laughs> Before I go, I'd like to say a few thank yous. Uh, first of all, to my family. You've always provided me with love and support, and it's meant a lot having you here today. I'd also like to thank Nick and Amy Cannon for helping me with this speech. If I, if I said anything odd or confusing today, please take it up with them, not me. <laughs> and lastly, I'd like to thank you, class of 2019. I am truly honored to have been your faculty speaker today. I'm going to miss having school with all of you. I hope that you know who you want to be, have the work ethic to make it a reality, and remain resolved despite the challenges that will arise. I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. guest speaker this year is Mr. Bill Green.
Bill Green is executive producer and host of the top-rated magazine program, Bill Green's Maine, now in its 18th season. He's won two regional Emmys and an Edward R. Morrill Award for his featured reporting. A lifelong Mainer, Bill was born in Bangor, educated in Bangor schools and the University of Maine, and is also the holder of the prestigious Black Bear Award. He holds three honorary degrees, including an honorary doctorate from the University of Maine at Palmerton. He is an inductee into the Maine Bar Broadcasters Hall of Fame, Maine Sports Hall of Fame, and the Silver Circle of the New England Chapter of the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. He's a registered Maine guide, a senior war warden at the Trinity Episcopal Church of Portland. He serves on the board of the Maine Sports Hall of Fame. Bill and his wife reside in Cumberland, and they have two grown children, Sam and Emily. It's my honor and privilege to introduce the class of 2019's guest speaker, Mr. Bill Green. Chairman Sweat, hate to do this to you, I'll do it once. <laughs> Headmaster Shuri, distinguished faculty, family, friends, and of course you great scholars of the class of 2019. Congratulations, you made it. You never have to spend another day in a classroom again. From here, everything's an elective. How great is that? Today, the fun begins in the pursuit of goals and accomplishments that will bring meaning and quality to your life. Now, I thought it would be appropriate to tell you what happened a little bit in my life that brought me here as your speaker today. The first thing is I was born with ADD. In fact, I'm so old, I had ADD before they knew what it was. I was just a kid that didn't pay attention. Hey, look, a bluebird. <laughs> but another great thing that happened in my life was when you guys were in kindergarten, we went to digital TV, high definition. After that time, I had ADD and HD. Wow. <laughs> Colors are great. At Bangor High School, the motto was, begin to be now what you will be hereafter. And it was embedded in the linoleum in the floor of what was called B Lobby, a place hundreds of us walked through every day, every hour between classes. I used to laugh as we hung out or somebody did something stupid because it was always a funny way to end a conversation. Right? You know, we'd, we'd lose a game or something, and I'd say, well, we're beginning to be now what we will be hereafter. Or, or somebody would run out of gas, we're beginning to be now what we will be hereafter. I suggest that knowledge is power would work as effectively as you, for you. By the way, the Bill Green that graduated from Bangor High School was of average academic accomplishment, had bright red hair, very energetic, something of a wise guy, played some sports and talked way too much which means even then I was ready for a career in broadcasting. And that's the first point I want to make to you today. When you reach the high ages of 30, 40, 50, or 60, you're going to be very similar to the person that you are now, only older, wiser, more experienced, or in my case, grizzled. So I would say take some time to think about the type of person you are. What is it about you? that are the characteristics that you want to move forward with. In my case, it wasn't the intelligent, tremendous intelligence and good looks that got me my job. It was energy and durability. In 47 years of TV, I've missed 10 days. I work hard, I'm usually punctual, and I often stay late. So for me, just being present has been important, and I'll give you a good example. They called me one time from the Portland Symphony. They were going to do one of those beautiful oceanfront concerts featuring an Aaron Copeland piece that's very famous called a Lincoln Portrait. And the guy on the phone, here's the way the invitation went, he went, Bill, this is Joe Schmo from the Portland Symphony. We're doing Lincoln Portrait, and we've asked Senator Olympia Snow to do the reading. Now, we're pretty sure she's going to say no, so when she does, do you want to do it? <laughs> okay. Well, you know, like somebody being asked a second to the prom, I was pretty insulted, and I said, yeah, I'd love to do that. And so in my business, I think it's important to remember that being plan B can be an important part of life. Opportunities come up, and when you can step in, if you're there working and step in to fill a void, that's going to be a very good thing for you. Now, after the 
uh, event was over, a number of people from the symphony came up to me and said complimentary things. One even dared to say, you know, I think you were better than Olympia Snow. Well, duh. <laughs> right? I do this for a living. She's just a senator, right? Know what your job is and, and be ready when that opportunity comes. Now, I do a piece called Green Outdoors, which runs usually on Monday nights. I come on the set. The anchors, you know, the highly paid people in nice clothing, they read what I wrote. We run the piece. They toss it back to me, and we chuckle like we like each other, which in our case we do because we are friends. Now, it's, it, it seems easy, but there's a professional side of the job going on on Monday night because in our business, Monday, we have nine Monday holidays. All right, you don't have to... I don't have to work on those nine Monday holidays, but I show up because it's my job, all right? Now, sometimes I'm leaving home at 5.30 to go read that intro, but I go and I do what Bill Belichick would say, help me, do your job. In fact, the smartest thing I ever did on TV was when they offered me my own show, they said, what do you want to call it? They thought that the show would last three to five years and the highest rating ever would be four. And I thought, well, if I'm going down in five years, I want to be remembered. Let's, show the, let's call the show Bill Green's Bane. It was a stroke of genius because now they can't get rid of me. <laughs> what are they going to do, call it Bill Green's Bane with Rob Nesbitt? <laughs> now, this is important. When I did the description of me as a kid, which means it's probably part of who I am as a man, I left out that I had an inferiority complex. And part of that complex involved where I was from, Maine. So I ask you to fast forward with me. So I'm about 37 years old. My wife is at a conference at Colonial Williamsburg, and I'm there being a spouse, which is a great deal. You get to eat the food and take in the sights and not do any work. We're seated at dinner with couples from Miami, Washington, and Chicago. And there we're from Washington. We're from Chicago. We're from Miami. Where are you from? We're from Maine. And they said, Maine. <laughs> when they say Maine with 17 syllables, I want you to know they're looking down their noses at you. So we started to talk, and that very month, Chicago, as you know from when the mobsters were there, is the murder capital of the world. That very month, Miami, I'm sorry, Washington, D.C. had passed Chicago as the murder capital of the world. And they were discussing that, and Miami was right up there a very dangerous place to be, and they said, how many murders did you have in Maine last year? And I said, 16. And they said, last month? I said, no, last year. And then we talked about our, our schools, and Miami was having trouble with their public schools, and of the regions, they were ranked something like 52, and Chicago was 48, and uh, D.C. was way down there. Where was Maine? We were fourth in reading and seventh in mathematics. And it went on like that for an hour. I wasn't, you know, bragging. I was just telling them the facts. And by the end of dinner, I was lying because I was afraid they were going to move to Maine. <laughs> now, we need those people. We don't need those six people, but we need people. I acknowledge that. But um, it, it's important to remember that we come from a great place, and I had something of an epiphany that night. I said, you know what? I'm not going to feel bad about myself. I love where I am, and that's essentially how uh, my program and my philosophy about Maine was born. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go about celebrating all the great things that we have. So at your age, most people want to get the heck out of here, and I admire that. That's like birds from a nest. Fly, get out of our sight. But remember that you come from a tremendous place. Tens of thousands of people each year plan their lives around a hike on the Appalachian Trail through this area, the greatest part of which, of the whole 2,100-mile trail, is the 100-mile wilderness right here. You are within a couple of hours of the Allagash, the, wa uh, the Allagash Waterway, Moosehead Lake, Baxter State Park, Katahdin itself, Katahdin Woods and Waters National Park uh, Monument, excuse me, Acadia, and our spectacular coast and the great blue water of our ocean. You see more beautiful country driving to school than millions of American graduates have seen in their lifetime. Keep that in mind. One graduation speaker gave great advice. He said, find a hobby and participate in that hobby at least once a week that brings you as much happiness as doubling your salary. And in the place that you live, whether it's hike or fish or run or paddle 
or a snowmobile or a snowshoe, find something but participate in it because it will bring you great joy. You are from a beautiful place. And whatever you're, while you're doing whatever you're about to do, remember that Maine, your native state, needs you. We need talented young people who want to work, want to contribute, and want to make Maine better. And this place right here is a great place to chip in and do your part. Now, the poet Robert Frost said, home is the place that when you got to go there, they got to take you. <laughs> we want you to know that we love you a little bit more than that because Maine needs you. Maine wants to use your energy and skills to make this an even better state. These next few years are difficult because while you enter an important part of your life, for most of you, the traditional support system that you have now will change. You'll be the same person you are now, taking your characteristics into this new set of circumstances. It's fun and exciting, but it can be dangerous. Be careful, because it can be a cold, cruel world out there. Now, with that said, the elective part of your life, take advantage of what the world has to offer, help others do great things, begins. So be very proud of the place that you are from. And always remember what that grizzled veteran on TV always told you, don't go bragging just because you're from Maine. Congratulations, class of 2019. It is my pleasure to be presenting this year's scholarships to graduates and postgraduates. Postgraduates, if you're here, you're asked to stand in place when your name is announced. You can pick up your scholarship in the main office following graduation. Some scholarships have four or more recipients. In those cases, I will ask you to stand in place to be recognized, and we'll, we've put your scholarship in your diploma. So, to kick things off, we begin with a Clyde F. Nason Award. This is given in memory of Clyde Nason to an ambitious senior or postgraduate who is a descendant of Clyde Nason or who is from Quebec uh, and is pursuing post-secondary education. Clyde was a cabinet maker by trade and enjoyed his family, hunting and fishing, and preserving our forests and rivers. This year's recipient is Julia Braslett. Please come forward. Fred Washburn Scholarship was established by friends and family of Fred and Hattie Washburn. Mr. Washburn was a skilled carpenter who wrote two books of poetry. Mr. and Mrs. Washburn had nine children who graduated from Foxcroft Academy. This year's recipient is Jair Garcia. Please come forward. Gary M. Hibbard Scholarship was established by Gary M. Hibbard and his wife Jane in 1982 and is awarded to a graduate with outstanding moral character and proven scholastic ability pursuing a career in business or the medical profession. This year we have two recipients, Mackenzie Beaudry and Dustin Simmons. Please come forward. Hardwood Products Company LP scholarships are awarded to dependents of employees of Hardwood Products who will further their education. This year we have two recipients, Darcy Campbell and Hunter Watt. Please come forward. Henry and Louise Garish Scholarship is awarded to a senior who has demonstrated scholastic excellence in the college preparatory course and who participated in extracurricular activities with preference to a student who will attend Bates College. This year's recipient is Bridget Casey. The 
Higgins Classical Institute Trustees Scholarship are awarded to graduates of FA who reside in Charleston to help with expenses of post-secondary education. Students, please stand in place to be recognized and we'll have this in your diploma. This year's recipients are Roseanne Bazelli, Jonathan Fikes, Spencer Ireland, and Dustin Simmons. The Hiram A. Braun Scholarship is awarded to a graduate of good character and good scholarship for advanced education beyond the secondary level. This year's recipient is Abigail Henderson. Please come forward. The John B. Weatherby Scholarship is awarded to a student who has demonstrated high achievement in athletics and academics. This year's recipient is Matthew Spooner, Jr. Joshua Josh Lander Scholarship was established in memory of Joshua Robert Lander, class of 1993, and is awarded to a senior to further his education, who has shown fine character and athletic ability, and has played football at FA. This year's recipient is Elijah Bickford. Please come forward. <laughs> Nickerson and O'Day Incorporated Construction and Engineering Scholarship is awarded to a senior with high academic achievement and plans for post-secondary study in construction management, engineering, architecture, or a related field. This year's recipient is Braden Kleikamp. C. Hintz Scholarship was established by members and friends of the Dover Foxcroft Methodist Church in recognition of the contribution of Mr. Hintz that he made to many area students he had tutored. This year's recipients, recipient is Eureli Contreras. The Richard Davis Stone and Anna D. Stone Scholarship was established in memory of Richard Davis Stone, class of 1973, who was involved in dance band, concert band, and the National Honor Society. This year's recipient is Bridget Casey. Robert George Davy Fund was established in memory of Robert George Davy by the will of Margaret C. Davy in memory of her son or an FA graduate who wishes to pursue higher education. This year we have two recipients, Nicholas Daneman and Riley Kleikamp. Please come forward. <laughs> Robert T. Mountford Jr. Memoriam was established in memory of Robert T. Mountford Jr., class of 1972. This scholarship is awarded to a past graduate pursuing a career in special education or rehabilitation of problem youth. This year's recipient is postgraduate Camille Bazelli. The Trey Anderson Trophy and Scholarship is awarded to a senior boy who participates in football, basketball, baseball, or wrestling and who demonstrates outstanding athletic ability, competitive spirit, desire, dedication, and pride in FA athletics. This year's recipient is Jeremy Richard. Walter H. and Eva Burgess Scholarship was bequeathed by the late Mara L. Burgess to graduates of FA of good character and good scholarship. This year's recipient is Riley Kleikamp.
We now have the Monson Academy Alumni Association and Trustee Awards. Winning this year's Constance McPherson Award is Douglas Kane. Esther Pennington Award this year is given to Hunter Watt. Hunter is also receiving the Margaret Davis Farnham Award as well as the Into Suomi Award. L.P. Gattrell Award is given this year to postgraduate Hannah Vanya. The Forrest Stevens Award this year is given to postgraduate Aquila Chase. The Frank Nelson Award is given to Gunnar Ranta. Robert B. Brown and Joyce E. Brown Award goes this year to Justin Hyatt Smith. The Stanwood R. and Marcy Marie S. Pullen Award is given this year to postgraduate Cassidy Pansera. These are the Monson Academy Trustee General Awards. There are uh, five of you, so please stand in place to be recognized. Isaac Anderson, Darcy Campbell, Cheyenne Duquette, Douglas Kane, and Isabella Santagata. <laughs> also receiving that award this year is postgraduate Nathaniel Falecki. Foxcroft Academy trustee scholarships begin with the C.D. and Helen Dyer Payne scholarships. These are awarded to the highest average of four years for a graduating senior boy and girl to attend a four-year college. This year's recipients are Ku Ying Huang and Spencer Ireland. Charles V. and Florence C. Ladd scholarships are given from the Ladd Fund to students who are pursuing a course of study beyond high school. Uh, there are multiple recipients, so please stand in place. Amelia Grant, Sawyer McCarty, Grady Reardon, Ashley Simcoe, and Bowtie Zhou. <laughs> also receiving the Ladd scholarships this year are postgraduates Blake Arno, Antonio Ayala, Angelina Bazelli, Erica Chadbourne, Jennifer Clausen, Jenna Klukey, Emily Curtis, Marie Hartung, Charlotte Jolin, Gabrielle Jolin, Ryan Laffin, Griffin Loomis, Virginia Maycumber, Avery Nelson, Ethan Poland, and Hannah Vanya. Please stand. The Clayton and Ina Drew Scholarship is awarded to a graduate pursuing a career as a pharmacist or a career in business. This year's recipient is Quinn Wen. George W. and Gertrude M. Sanford scholarships were established by the Sanfords. Please stand in place to be recognized. Kylie Dow, Uchen Fu, Brianna Jazowski, Caleb Ladd, Kaylee Taylor, and Hunter Watt. <laughs> Postgraduates receiving the Sanford scholarships this year include Camille Bazelli, Maria Isabel Cedeno, and Sophia Curzius. Harry Martin Bush and Lillian Rogers Bush scholarships 
are given to a graduate with good scholastic record uh, to promote his or her interest in electrical engineering, communications, science, medicine, or intensive original research. We have multiple recipients this year, so please stand to be recognized. Lauren Cooper, Kaylin Seavey, Dustin Simmons, and Matthew Spooner, Jr. Postgraduates receiving that award this year include William Casey, Cooper Nelson, Jacob Olson, Joshua Reed, and Emily Sprecher. The Howard T. Clark scholarships are awarded to graduates of Falk Croft Academy based on a, a, academic attainment and character. Please stand to be recognized. Helen Le, Hannah Poland, Hannah Sprecher, and Kate Vu. Postgraduates receiving this award this year include Brianna Adkins, Austin Bickmore, and Rose Kreider. The Jane Weldon Delgren Scholarships were founded by Mrs. Delgren, who was born in Yonkers, New York in 1901 and summered at Packard's camps and moved to Dover Foxcroft upon the death of her husband. Funds were willed to the Foxcroft Academy Board of Trustees to award to graduates. This year's recipients are Gabriel Chambers and Mackenzie McLeod. Please come forward. Also receiving a Delgren scholarship this year is postgraduate Harley Knowles. The Lester and Edith Miles Kluke scholarship is awarded to a graduating senior who plans to attend a four-year college with a grade point average of 3.0 or greater. This year's recipient is Ryan Vino. Malcolm C. Arnold and Arlene W. Arnold scholarships are awarded to a senior boy or girl with preference given to any student planning to attend Bowdoin College. This year's recipients are Braden Kleikamp and Alexis London. Margaret Buswell Nash scholarships are awarded to graduates of FA who are in good academic standing and intend to further his or her education. This year's recipients are Jonathan Fikes and Jenny Wen. Martha Woodbury Kurth scholarship is awarded to a student planning to attend the University of Maine at Orono, preferably in the field of nursing. This year's recipient is postgraduate Nathaniel Faleco. The Myron Mike and Joyce Johnston Bean scholarship is awarded to a graduating senior of academic merit who has proven scholastic ability and has been accepted to a four-year college or university. This year's recipient is David McLeish. Raymond and Marilyn Harvey scholarships are awarded to students pursuing their education in the agricultural fields. This year's recipients are Riley Kleikamp and Graham Wilson. Teresa Velasquez 
Kluge Scholarship is awarded to a graduating senior planning to attend a four-year college with a grade point average of 3.0 or greater to honor Mrs. Kluge's life of service as an educator. This year's recipient is Mackenzie Bowdry. Teresa Dow Wallace scholarships were established in memory of Teresa Dow Wallace, class of 1920, by her husband, F.J. Wallace. They are awarded annually to seniors for general overall excellence in the completion of their high school curriculum. Please stand to be recognized. Ada Abdikashova, Bridget Casey, Liz Che, Nicholas Daneman, Abigail Henderson, Ethan Lee, Gavin Morshed, Sophie Wen, Mariah Poulin, and Sarah Sophia Stentarda. The W. Ward and Margaret S. Weber Memorial Scholarship was established by the family of W. Ward and Margaret S. Weber to assist graduating seniors that are continuing on to college. Ward strongly believed in the value and importance of education and in the opportunities that a quality education provides. This year's recipients are Suhi Kim and Lincoln Wentworth. Helen Dillon Stipham Valedictorian Award was established by Linus Stipham, MD, as a gift to his wife in 1978 and is awarded to the senior who has maintained the highest academic average and has attended Foxcroft Academy for at least three years. This year's recipient is Spencer Iron. Every graduation, the head of school has the honor to select seniors for the head of school prizes. Every year it's very, very difficult as there are many deserving graduates and this year is no exception as this class is a very talented class. The first head of school prize goes to Natalie Bersagian. Natalie is the daughter of Nell Bersagian and Cardina Avion. She played soccer and was on the math team, robotics team, has a black belt in karate and teaches karate back home in Armenia. Natalie plans to attend Glendale Community College in Glendale, California to study business, administration, and finance. With always a smile on her face, she excelled at Foxcroft Academy while maximizing her experiences, although she never did her karate presentation at Student Assembly as she promised. She is a very positive present presence in the school and also in residential life. The first head of school prize goes to Natalie Barsegan. The next head of school prize goes to Mackenzie McLeod. Mackenzie is the daughter of Jack and Christy McLeod of Sebec. She's participated in fall and winter cheering where she has served as captain. She is the student council vice president this year and volunteers for drama camp and at the Bauer Bank Fire Department. Mackenzie plans to attend Empire Beauty School to study cosmetolo cosmetology. She has a gift and can use her passion on a topic to impact somebody's thinking, including my own, about whatever topic she's discussing. Her reasoning was so sound that it completely changed my thoughts by 180 degrees. Mackenzie is another very positive influence on the FA community. She always has a smile on her face. No matter what your mood is, it becomes sunny after being greeted by Mackenzie. And her jazz hands after each cheer were epic. The second head of school prize goes to Mackenzie McLeod. The next head of school prize goes to Dustin Simmons. 
Dustin is the son of John and Colette Simmons of Charleston. While at Foxcraft Academy, Dustin has been involved in Key Club, was a member of the track team, and a Rose Award recipient. For the last three years, he's been captain of the championship wrestling team. In the fall, Dustin will attend Huston University in Bangor, majoring in nursing. Dustin has been an outstanding role model for all to follow. Three weeks ago, I spoke to JMG and, and Mr. Green, great minds think alike, so pay attention. Um, three weeks ago, I spoke at the JMG closing and talked about Bill Belichick's motto for the New England Patriots, do your job. Smart, hardworking, dedicated, Dustin reminds me of someone who does his job. It served him well at Foxcroft Academy and it will serve him well in whatever he does. I would like to present the third head of school prize to Dustin Simmons. The last head of school prize goes to Abigail Henderson. Abby's the daughter of Michael and Alyssa Henderson of Dover Foxcroft. Abby's been involved in the Civil Rights Team, FA Theater Productions, Band, Select Choir, National Honor Society, was the captain of the swim team, a recent w Rose Award recipient. In the fall, she will attend Endicott College in Beverly, Massachusetts, majoring in hus hospitality management with a focus in event planning. Abby's been a great role model for all. She's hardworking, very talented, polite, humble, respectful, and a very positive person. She stood for social change, and I admired the way she did it. The last head of school prize goes to Abby Henderson. And I didn't realize till this past Friday that she sings like Cindy Lapa. <laughs> now I believe it's time for the musical selection by the class of 2019.
well done. The class of 2019 valedictorian is Spencer Ireland. Spencer is the son of Daniel Ireland of Charleston and Bridget Ireland of Dover Foxcroft. Spencer has been a gifted member of the Pony Herd, excelling in many areas. He was co-captain of the math team, manager of the soccer team, and a member of the track and unified basketball teams. He is a senior class president, treasurer of the student council, a member of Key Club, NHS, and a recent Rose Award recipient. In the fall, Spencer will attend Boston University in the College of Arts and Sciences, majoring in astronomy. It's my honor to introduce Spencer Ireland, valedictorian for the class of 2019. Good afternoon, parents, grandparents, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, and all other relatives, friends, faculty and staff, administrators, trustees, alumni, employers, Mr. Bill Green, and of course, a special shout out to my class, the class of 2019. Since the fall of 2015, we have roamed the halls of Foxcroft Academy and ac accomplished great feats that will forever stay with us and the Pony Herd. We didn't come in last in our first ever homecoming, and we have won the last two back to back. We have also been named back to back Golden Pony Champions. Yeah, you guys can clap, let's go. Let's go. Woo! That includes the sweep we pulled off this year of homecoming, winter carnival, and spring fling, just in case any underclassmen were wondering. <laughs> Not only have we grown together as a class, but we have matured into brilliant young adults that have been part of numerous successful teams and clubs. The wrestling team won their first ever Class B state championship in 2000, 2016, coached by the U.S. Cellular Coach of the Year, Luis Ayala. In the same year, Mr. Weber's track team won the state championship. The, fo yeah. the football team has won back-to-back -back LTC champions under head coach Danny White, and the field hockey team has had an overall record of 49-7 and seven in the regular season the past four years under coach Stephanie Smith. These are just a few of the great accomplishments that have been earned in the sports realm over the past four years. The sudden emergence of the Robotics Club, winning their first ever state championship and competing at the international level is astonishing. They have easily filled an entire trophy case by themselves. The seemingly infinite trophies and awards that the theater and music departments have earned do not go unnoticed either and we can all agree that they've achieved, achieved a lot. Our outstanding language department has helped us excel on the national Spanish, French, and Latin exams. Estamos muy agradecidos de ti. The math team has not been denied yet under Mr. Wayne Strout, as they have been dubbed Eastern Maine Class B champs for the past nine years in a row. We have accomplished great things here in our four years, and now I'd like to thank all the people who have helped us along the way. Mom, thank you for always being there for us, generally caring about our schoolwork, giving us advice, and occasionally making our lunches. A special thank you to my beautiful mother for all she has done for me in the past 18 years. I'll never forget our time spent together. I love you. Dad, you always brighten up our day with your good sense of humor and funny jokes. Well, maybe they would could be considered funny if it was the 80s. <laughs> but Dad, I do have to say 
that they're better than Friday's funnies. Sorry, Mr. Shorey. I personally have been blessed with the greatest grandparents ever who would do anything to see me happy, and I know many of my classmates can say the same. Not only do they spoil us, but we can always ask them for advice, and I am so thankful for that. Love you, Graham. Siblings seemingly have 533 different ways to annoy us, but the relationships we have formed with one another are forever lasting, and we always know that we have someone to turn to when in need. Shout out to that kid with a camera right there. <laughs> but if we want to talk about truly special relationships, I think the most meaningful connection is that between the teacher and the student. Now parents, before you start throwing things at me, just hear me out here. Teachers deserve the utmost respect from every student, which is not always the case. Day in and day out, teachers, specifically the ones sitting over there, bust their butts to make sure that we receive the education necessary for post-secondary success, no matter what we want to do. They are patient individuals who constantly motivate us and give us guidance. So from the class of 2019, thank you to all the teachers who have helped us prepare for this moment and thank you to all the friends and family members who have loved and supported us along the way. <laughs> now, I think we should do a little math. What's everyone say? Yeah. OK, not quite the reaction I was looking for. but <laughs> I would like to start by asking anyone who feels lucky to be here today to raise their hand. Please, anyone. Uh, I could, there could be a few more. but. I'm going to tell you how, how lucky the class of 2019 is to be sitting here today. Obviously, the experiences that we have all gone through are drastically different, so th this is a very rough estimate of the real number. I'm not going to include the unfathomable chance of the universe existing with the physical pro properties it possesses, or the prob probability of Thea colliding with Earth in its early formation nearly 4.5 billion years ago, yeah, that's a B, not an M, which caused the axis tilt, and I'm certainly not going to remind you all of the extremely, extremely rare chance that Earth would be the only place in the universe that was suitable for life, the life that has evolved into what we see today. Numerous generations of Homo sapiens have survived for a duration of approximately 200,000 years, but I'm going to start this experiment way, way, way back in the 1980s. <laughs> For the class of 2019 to be sitting here today, our parents had to meet at some point, presumably sometime in the late 80s or early 90s. I know that's different for everyone, but I'm trying to keep this simple. Considering the approximate world population during this time, the chance that our parents even met is one in 40,000. If any event in our parents' lives occurred differently, going to college in a different state, being late to work that one day, or even waiting an extra second at a stoplight, they might not have met. That would mean no you. <laughs> For those two people to meet and be holding a healthy newborn baby sometime between the years of 1999 and 2002, it's a mind-boggling one in 20 quintillion chance. I purposely didn't go into detail on this for obvious reasons, but if you're interested, just come talk to me later. <laughs> for this baby to grow up and survive until the age necessary to enroll in high school is one in 21 quintillion. That is the minimum, minimum probability that a class of 2019 member had of just making it to the age of 14. The chance of going to school at Foxcroft Academy in Dover, Foxcroft, Maine, on the United States soil is 1 in 800,000, which brings our total probability up to 1 in 16 septillion. The probability of winning a Mega Millions record-setting jackpot for three consecutive days is 1 in 28 septillion, to put that into perspective. We had to spend at least four years in high school, well, some of us, and complete all of our classes to be recognized today, with the probability of that being one in 750. So the total probability that my peers and I are to be graduating from Foxcroft Academy today, June 9th, 
2019 is an unfathomable 1 in 13 octillion chance. That's the number 13 with 24 zeros behind it. As you sit there and try to comprehend this insane probability, I will leave you all with one final message. We, the class of 2019, have left our footprint on Foxcroft Academy history forever and will be remembered as the class that beat the odds. Thank you very much and congratulations to my class, the class of 2019. for the time we have all been waiting for, the presentation of diplomas. So this year, parents, families, friend, family and friends, the diplomas are being presented in alphabetical order by last name to help you be able to predict when your son or daughter may be uh, crossing the stage. And please feel free to come forward. We have an lot of open space right here in front. Uh, you can take a picture of your graduate as, as they receive their diploma. So to get things started. Ada Abdikashova. Isaac A. Anderson. Jewel E. Anderson. Hunter S. Annis. Jared Burke Atkinson. Anna Barsegian. Natalie Barsegian. Sahak Barsegian. Samantha Lynn Michelle Beauchene. Mackenzie Beaudry. Rebecca May Bessie. Elijah C. Bickford. Christian Francis Blakely. Grace Elizabeth Booker. Dakota West Booley. Julia Carmen Raslett. Eliash Brodzinski. Heather Ann Marie Burgess. Roseanne Faith Bazelli. Darcy L. Campbell. Bridget E. Casey. Sophia Desiree Chadborn. Alicia Marie Chambers. Gabriel Ian Chambers. Yuming Chen. Yojong Che. Yeah. 
Noah David Contreras. Ureli Contreras. Lauren Elise Cooper. Nicholas J. Daneman. Caitlin Trinity Davis. Jacob Spencer Diamond. Huang Ein Don. Chandler Robert Dow. Kylie Marie Dow. Cheyenne Elizabeth Duquette. Yusef Ibrahim Othman Eldib. Abby Angela Ewer. Jonathan O. Fikes. Shayla Leanne Frazier. Yuchong Fu. Jair Garcia. Milena Gavorgian. Hope M. Gosby. Amelia Ray Grant. Jiamin Gu. Madison Olivia Hall. Chloe Angeline Hamily. Tigran Herapetian. Abigail Charlotte Henderson. McKenna Michelle Higgins. Ailey Megan Hines. Kuying Huang. Jacob P. Hughes. Nat Min Huynh. Spencer J. Ireland. Brianna May Jazowski. Douglas M. Kane. Tyler Allen Kessler. Mark William Kilmer. Nam Ju Kim. Suhi Kim. Braden Ryan Clycamp. Riley Allen Clycamp. Caleb W. Ladd. Mi Ho Huang Lu.
Ifan Lee. Paul Leo Lazat IV. Alexis London. Young Lu. Molly Lyford. Michaela Danielle Majeski. Jacob Vance Marsh. Sawyer Teague McCarty. David Mason McLeish. Mackenzie Nicole McLeod. Emily Moores. Gavin J. Morshed. Matthew P. Nelson. Chi Quinn Nguyen. Huang Wen. Quinn Wen. Caleb James Niles. Michael Daniel Olabe. Songche Park. Jordan C. Pamel. Hannah Grace Poland. Mariah Ann Poulin. Tina Q. Sydney Ann Quigley. Gunnar Soren Ranta. Grady William Reardon. Hillary Grace Redmond. Jeremy Paul Richard. Ashley Marie Robinson. Tyler J. Robinson. Isabella Grace Santagata. Claire T. Sesney. Kaylin Mackenzie Seavey. Ashley T. V. Simcoe. Dustin John Simmons. Nathaniel Hunter Skomars. Justin Hyatt Smith. Sarah Ann Spencer. Matthew D. Spooner, Jr.
Hannah Nicole Sprecker. Sarah Sophia Stentardo. Albert L. Sudsbury. Joshua David Tatlock. Kaylee Marie Taylor. Cody Christopher Tetlow. Ryan D. Vino. Kate Vu. Kevin Vu. Gasper Irian Wambrau. Sekton Petros Wandikbo. Junjia Wong. Luke Andrew Warner. Hunter Watt. Lincoln Grant Wentworth. Sky A. Wheaton. Joshua David Whittemore. Graham Snowden Wilson. Chloe Lynn Wyman. Alexis Xu. Bo Zhao Yang. Wenting Yang. Chongbing Yu. Zhang Bowen. Zhang Yunchung. Jo Botai. It is now my pleasure to welcome to the podium Dr. Richard Sweat, President of the Foxcroft Academy Board of Trustees. Good afternoon. Uh, I am here to speak on behalf of the entire Board of Trustees of the Foxcroft Academy. Our board has 19 members, some of whom live as close as Dover Foxcroft and others who live as far away as Cupertino, California and Beijing, China. All of us are strongly committed to our school and very proud of the students, faculty, administration and staff. To have a successful school requires a partnership an enthusiastic partnership between students willing to put in the work to learn and achieve and a faculty, administration, and staff that treat each student as a unique individual as they mentor them. The Foxtrot Academy class of 2019 certainly has been an example of that, producing remarkable achievements in academics, the arts, music, and athletics. For that, the entire board extends 
To all involved, including supportive parents and family, our sincere appreciation and thanks. So with those sentiments, the board of Foxcroft Academy proudly declares the class of 2019 officially graduated. <laughs> and therefore, I, I proudly present you all the class of 2019. As you have heard, you are our 196th graduating class. Bright futures await you if you continue your habits of enthusiasm, optimism, and lifelong learning. We wish you all the very best in your future lives and careers and ask only that you always remember where you came from and all the people who helped you along the way. Thank you. and then join us on the front lawn for our reception. Thank you so much. Congratulations, class of 2019. Two, 